So, and one thing I want to talk about here is each one of the, it's like we started simple with Australia. It was, it's really right. the most straightforward one. And then everybody's added their own unique complexity yeah. to it. But the good news is all of them have, have geared this towards online sellers outside the US and they created a simplified registration system that makes it at least easy for the, the registration and remittance process. That part has been good up to Norway. And then you want to talk about the UK? Yep. Now, yes, Brexit. Okay. Um, and the other side of the, the simplified is they said, we're not going to make it apply to everybody. We're going to make it simple uh, for the little guys and the big guys are the only ones that have to register and comply with these. Cool. Makes a lot of sense for e-commerce. Then the UK came along. Oh, geez. And they said, we're not. We're just going to take our existing tax laws and we're just going to say it applies to everybody in the world that wants to sell anything into the UK. So if you want to sell one box with a t-shirt from your, from your business into the UK, you're supposed to register and remit on anything under a thousand, uh, 135 right. pounds. Pounds. Right. Yep. So if the shipment is valued below 135 British pounds, that's the, uh, intrinsic value. So that's, that's just the product value of the goods. Um, then you're supposed to register and remit that. And then they didn't simplify the registration process. So it's an absolute. It was like registering as if you were in country. There was no separate process for those outside of their jurisdiction. No, and, and the whole process is confusing as, as I mean, I, we, we saw providers that were charging when this came out for one-time registration, like hundreds of dollars, mm -hmm. maybe maybe more. I yeah. mean, it's been it, just to get that that tax ID, and then you still have the burden of tracking and remitting and doing all that yep. on your own. Yep. And so it was, and, it, it was and how, how long would it take to get the ID? Oh man, you're, well, it, it wasn't about getting the ID once you submitted the papers. It was figuring out what the heck they were asking for. As oh, you're going to the product, because the terminology and everything they used was confusing unless you, I mean, it was confusing even for those inside of um, the UK, but uh, those that were familiar with the system and, and in the business, they could help you outside of that. It was, it was like speaking a foreign language when we first started looking at that. Um, so yeah, it was, it, the law itself, the actual of when to collect and remit tax, super simple. It's like 135 pounds. There you go. That's your threshold. Anything below you're supposed to um, collect and remit applies to everybody. There's no threshold to worry about. All that's simpler, but the whole process the, itself. The making is, this practical is. Oh yeah. It was, is it not there? Nope. What, nope. It, it, now, what about B two B? Right. I think there's are there some in fact, exemptions. All of these all these laws are really B two C. Right. There's yeah. there's exemptions for B two B here, but the customer's VAT number, the importer needs to be included on that commercial invoice. Yeah. So if you kind of go through all of these, um, you can you can still send stuff B two B, and each country is a little different. But yeah, there's there's some invoicing requirements and things that that, that can come into play. Um, if I look at like uh, New Zealand, for example, they have some very, I'd say New Zealand, when they rolled out with their law, they had some very detailed instructions, which was awesome. Some of these countries, not so much, but New Zealand actually really thought it out and tried to try to give instructions on all the different uh, um, use cases. And B2B was one of those. And they basically said, hey, if you know it's a business, you know, yeah, you can you can just issue them a a, a proper invoice with the tax IDs on it, and you know call it a day, right. or still collect the tax and let them get the get a refund on it. So, the you know Norway did it because they're not part of the EU, right? They were able to kind of unilaterally just do their own thing. This was triggered by Brexit, yeah, hundred percent by Brexit, right? Yep, Brexit occurs. And now they're they're revamping their entire, you know, all of a sudden now they're collecting duty on stuff that's coming in from other Euro European, you know, uh, members, right, of the e members of the EU. And uh, they had to figure out how to get tax, right? Mm -hmm. So 100%. And, and I think the IOS stuff, which we'll talk to next, was already in the works. And the UK had to now come up with their own scheme. Right. And they said, eh, we, we've already got something here. Let's just, let's just push it out and make everybody comply with it. 